As a famous starship captain once said, of course, another famous starship captain also once said, hey, wherever our mission takes us, we'll try to have a little fun along the way. And I'm Dr. Trek, Larry Nimichek. Uh, one of us is a real doctor, actually. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Well, it's like number 46. Isn't that special enough? We're just one away from four. Oh, no, you mean the other thing. Yay. Yes. We've got a double whammy for you today. We have a watch along. So I hope you all have seen um, our, if you haven't, I'll tell you real quick. We're doing a watch along today of the Voyager season four, episode 23 episode, Living Witness, which is a great doctor episode. Um, it's a classic, so you want to get with that. So here, it's bring your own media, right? Like we've done before. So while we get ready, here, we'll, we'll jabber just a few more seconds. But get it queued up, and we'll all start together, okay? It's on Netflix. It's on Hulu. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on CBS All Access, of course, slash soon-to-be Paramount Plus in a couple of days. Um, so it's commercial-free on all those. There's other platforms where there are commercials if you want to get there. But anyway, get Living Witness queued up and we'll be launching today but yes we've done a few watch alongs before the reason we're watching this is because we have two guests today we've never we had do we do we've, yes it's a day of first Sully. we've never had guests <laughs> and a watch along and we've never had this together before yes yes so and the reason for all this is folks if you haven't heard um when the great DS9 documentary what you left behind was was done people were like okay but what about a Voyager documentary that's exactly what every single person said. That was the first response. And uh, now we've got the answer. There is a Voyager documentary on the way from the same folks. David Zappone, his company, 455 Films. He worked with Shatner. He did the Spock documentary with Adam Nimoy. Uh, they did all of Shatner's captains, the chaos on the bridge. They did what you leave behind. And um, they're working on the Voyager documentary. Now, we did have, and I'm just taking this and running with it here right now. We did have my longtime friend. Uh, recent guest on the Trek Files, uh, Lolita Fajo, down as our other guest today. She, the the part of Lolita Fajo today is going to be played by uh, producer editor Joe Cornbrot on the show today too. So we're going to have two folks from the documentary team. The top two folks are going to be with us after here on camera with us. If all goes right, um, they're going to be with us after we do the watch along to talk about the episode because the episode Ali shows what happens. If you don't get your documenting right. And it, it shows how uh, malleable memory can be and how we can get things right and how we can get things wrong. Um, yes. And how it makes a difference in real life. Yes. Sometimes. And life support stuff. And life support, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so David and Joe will be with us to talk about the episode and talk about it's a great Picardo show as the doctor. You know, he has a bravura performance and to talk about uh you know some of the documentaries they've done and the 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 news flash here is that the voyager documentary a big chunk of its funding is a is an indiegogo crowdfunder that's about to launch in two days you know with perks and everything so they're here and guys we'll have the chat running so everybody feel free to uh to dive in and you know talk about the episode you can ask about the documentary we'll try to funnel questions here and all of that so i'm so excited. I just can't hide it. 
<laughs> I know, I know, I know. We're going to watch Star Trek. So, folks, um, while we are getting along um, or getting ready here, make sure you um, have the episode queued up. So we are watching Star Trek Voyager Season 4, Episode 23, Living Witness. Um, get that fired up. And as we are um, getting this ready, I think I'd, I'd love to hear from folks. Uh, what's your favorite uh, doctor episode. This is this is a great one, and uh, you mean the doctor, the Voyager. doctor. Yeah, yeah, not not Doctor Who. No, not that, not that show. We're not talking about other shows. This is a Star Trek show. Um, what's your favorite the Doctor episode? Uh, this is this is a great one. What I love about this one is um, the crew really gets to let loose and play these different characters, and you see the Doctor kind of reacting to all that. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, very different from the other Doctor episodes, but there's there's so many wonderful ones. Um, uh, Larry, I think one of the greatest ones. I, I'm blanking on the name of the episode, but when the Doctor runs the um, the life simulation, the family family sim simulation. Uh, what's the name of that episode? Uh, Delta Quadrant sitcom. That's what. It's <laughs> It, it was like WandaVision before uh, before WandaVision. Um, whatever that name is of, of that episode, that's <laughs> it's probably my favorite. And it also... Um, uh, I'm blanking and I'm looking it up. I hate to admit that, but I am. It's, um, Nathaniel says critical care. No, nope, um, critical care no, is that, I think yeah. he might be saying uh, critical care is his one of his favorite. Oh, uh, oh doctor. Yes, yes. It's right down his alley because it's a comment on... Yeah. A comment um, on, uh, oh, on medical, the American medical system right, uh, right. being class-based and wealth-based. Folks, what is this episode that I'm talking about? Does anyone remember this? Anyways, that's my favorite <laughs> Doctor episode. Larry, do you have a favorite Doctor episode? Uh, no, because I don't have favorite Voyager episodes. No, um... <laughs> I I don't think it, well you know the one where he was the two the two part Real life. Invest, invest yeah I knew it was something simple thank you uh, uh, Miramar uh, for that real life yeah. uh well I, you know the the doctor um what was it uh, investigations in life signs where he's dating oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he's dating Dinara Pell um the whole first uh, oh well you know Doctor Taylor Tinker Spy ah uh, yeah Frank Frank agrees with that one yeah uh, Frank loves yeah that one. um. It's it's very late in the game, uh, but um, uh, Renaissance Man, where he's the author, yep, yep. it's it's a rehash of um, of uh, of Data's trial for human rights or for right legal rights. Only it's the holograms trial for human rights. Oh oh, the one that he shares with well, some of his shows with Jerry with uh, Seven of Nine, um, uh, Second not Second Skin. That's um, Flesh and uh, Body and Soul. Body and Soul. Yep. Where well, it's not really a doc. It's a doctor, but it's really Jerry's episode where she's impersonate. She's got the doctor downloaded into her seven body. Yeah, that's a fun, that's a, uh, a, uh, a really fun uh, one. Fun. Yeah, we're getting yeah, uh, getting a lot of love for someone to watch over me. Um, yeah. uh, re, uh, Tinker uh, Tenor, Doctor Spy. Yeah, as you mentioned too. Um, Charlotte says it's hard to pick one. I just love the Doctor. He's my favorite Trek Doctor. <laughs> Heroes and Demons. Uh, that's an early one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The games. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Charlotte says, and Robert Picardo is the nicest guy too. Um, he's yeah. a <clears throat> he's a, a gentleman and a scholar. Um, so Larry, should we get things fired up here? Um, we've got we got a lot of show to do here, um, including watching a show. Yeah. Um, so folks, again, we are watching Living Witness, um, fire mm. up your streaming or DVD of Should choice, go here. season four, episode 23, um, we're going to count it in together. So we're all in sync here. All right. mm. Um, Larry, are you ready to go on your end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, just had to switch browsers. So let me, uh, Larry is switching subspace frequencies here. Uh -huh. Cross circuiting to be actually old school techno yeah. babble. We Make kept sure you um, you want to engage your uh, streaming service in a Type R formation. Mm hmm. Because <laughs> it's format. One thing I never forgot in the Apple when the when the red shirts are with Kirk and they're going to fan out and Kirk says, 
Formation L. And I always go, what? They're going to go around like this? Uh, what, what is Formation L? I, that, that's always stuck in my mind. Okay. Because, uh, you know, of course it would. Uh, here we go. Okay. And I guess uh, I'm trying to keep up with the chat and look around. I guess our flow is we're looking good on sound and sync and everything. I haven't seen anybody. Yeah, I, um, I, I forgot to unmute my mic in the beginning, but that was fine. People <laughs> told me. And I have my mic in the same room today, so I feel like I'm way ahead. That's good. That's good. Okay, everybody. All right. Uh, once again, I am not going to count down and cling on. Okay. Everybody queued up? Everybody ready? I think we're queued up. Count us uh, in, Larry. We're just cuter than nothing. Okay. Uh, I hope. Here we go. Three, two, one. I mean the very beginning, right? The very beginning of the teaser. Three, yes. two, one. Press. Oop, I need my a long, loving beauty shot here of Jay Way. Forceps be applied without apology. This is so not Federation. It's this Starfleet one. And they say, Voyager never got a Mirror Universe show. Yeah, this is kind of a Voyager's Mirror. It had a couple of them, actually, but yeah. What's the uh, what's the one, um, Live Fast and Profit, or what? what is that? Yeah. Uh, Live Fast and Die Young? No. Uh, what was the one with the uh, the people who were impersonating Voyager? That was basically it, yeah. L um, live fast and prosper, is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, I think that's it. It's only one word off. Yeah. You got my sound up. Ooh, look, she's presaging red here. <laughs> I love how everybody in the galaxy uses the same. They all have the same docking collars, and they all <laughs> and they all know what a light year is. Okay, <laughs> the Universal Translator translates a lot, including those docking. Uh, Kazon. A Kazon in the... Neelix? What's Neelix doing up there? I think someone hasn't got their facts right. <laughs> Warship Voyager. Mm -hmm. right. She's got her tight little voice on. Chakotay. The tattoo on Chicote is great. Biogenic <laughs> weapons? Oh my gosh. This is very mirror universe. It's very strange restrained. Look at the ceiling the ceiling piece. I mean they've done subtle things with the mm. see that that cross piece. Libby says Neelix is on the bridge cooking up trouble. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's not an android, folks. I remember um, watching this and being like, what? what? What's going on? Hand fire. Oh, look, it's add ons. They stole the add -ons. Ad added phaser bank from uh, the three nacelle. <laughs> Enterprise D and stuck in that book. Wait. Mirror says uh, it's the alternative facts universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. 
Scott asks, are Tuvok's ears different? Uh, oh, I don't, I don't, th there's a lot of subtle stuff that was done. I didn't remember that. I'll take a look and we'll it's, take a, we'll take a close yeah. look, Scott. Um, Scott, it's we're very inspect obvious. those ears very closely. Um, all right. Well, uh, Larry, is I mean, this usually on a, usually on a watch along, I don't do a K, a, a distinct K factor, but, or K3 factor, but, uh, I've got a few notes here with us just to have some fun. Um, Ian like says, funny how photonic is much eviler than photons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, photons be dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, Larry, this is a good time. I think this is our first Voyager watch along, if I'm, if I'm right. Is that, is that right? I, uh, gosh, we've, we've been at this for 40 years. I forget the early ones. Uh, we did TOS. Uh, we've done two DS9. We've done uh, TNG with Well, Tapestry. look at you keep the, uh, look at, well, what a great day to do a Voyager on the day we have Voyager people. Yes, no, it makes sense. I, um, I have a very hard time deciding between which intro is, um, is my favorite, um, between Deep Space yeah. Nine and Voyager. Um, it always bugged me that, that TNG didn't really get its own theme until mm -hmm. like first contact. And, uh, I, I love how unique the themes are to deep space nine and Voyager. The intro sequence is just so beautiful. Um, I, I, I can't decide which one I love more. I, well, I, love I know. And I, I just, I remember thinking back and I still will say this, they wanted the DS nine theme to be very languid and lonely. Mm -hmm. So today, you know, 30 years later, it's really languid and lonely. Uh, <laughs> But I get shot for saying that, so. Oh, look, we're back. Oh, look, they have the the, uh, the warp core thingy that, uh, the plasma coil injector from the TNG set back there. Okay. Oh, oh. little mini K3. I just now realized that, yeah. Oh, the killer drones. Species assimilated. <laughs> the impressed labor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now what you're about to see. That's it. Oh my gosh. I think his ears are more pointy. Yes, they are. Oh yeah, when they've got studs or something. Oh yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the evil smile, they're having so much fun. Well, you get to for the actors, it's what you get to do on a on a mirror type shows. You the pick gloves. The bad. Larry, the leather gloves are just such a great yeah. touch. There you go. Brandon and Brian and, and Joe Minoski. And Tim Russ directed this. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's why he's grinning and having so much fun. Ensign Kazon. Ensign Kazon. <laughs> Didn't think they'd be using that wig anytime soon. I'm surprised the uh, Kazon isn't higher rank than Kim. <laughs> smug to Vok. You always get smug. You ever notice how they always pair, uh, Chakotay and Kim get paired up for things? Like timeless? Like Oh, yeah. You know, the big shows. Oh, he's got sloppy hair. Yeah, well, when, you, when you're when evil torturing, your hair gets sloppy. I'm a mammoth piece. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. This is, the, <laughs> this is the show they brought Q in to do his uh, makeup, his tattoo. <clears throat> Chakote reminds me a lot of Klingon. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Ooh. It's solventing his brain. Oh my gosh. It's brutal. That's like a... I just realized that looks like a, a TNG turbo lift. It does, top. yeah. Are very similar. <clears throat> yeah, Evan. Nathaniel says Kim can't even be a good torturer. <laughs> Well, stop reading and get back to your work. Yeah. I'm, All right. I'm reading wonderful uh, recipes for Layola root, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to torture them with my soup. <laughs> yeah. That's, that was... You're not giving Paris much different to do. She's got it pulled back pretty tight. Not the Borg activation. The sequence. Borg activation sequence. The BAS. At the. Yes. They've assimilated. Oh wait, I mean they've uh, they've adapted. Oh, Jerry gets some tubules. It's it, it's interesting when you to think about this because <clears throat> how would all of this work? How would they? How would they be so powerful that they could overtake the Borg? And does this culture not have much knowledge of the Borg and how they work? I mean, I know we're 700 years in the future. Mm -hmm. We don't know that yet, but yeah. yeah. Oh, they said. They said in the um, in the Oh, that's teaser. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's not. doesn't care. Chamber 19. <laughs> this is so mere universe, Larry. Well, you know, sometimes the mirror universe is a little flamboyant, uh, even without all the gold of discovery. And this is this is like a real tightly. They're all nobody's really vamping and camping. They're all they've got it really tightly wound, so far. She is. Kate is especially playing. The smirky Kim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scott says Chamber 19 is a mirror universe version of Portal 47. <laughs> and don't you believe it. <laughs> don't you forget it. I Yeah, I see uh, Evan here said those black gloves very bester. Speaking of... Um, Larry, speaking of uh, mirror universe, we don't get any vision of a TNG mirror, mirror universe. Um, were there ever any plans to revisit that? No, I mean, it's, it's really strange. Mean, actually, it's, it's, it's unfolded this way now. But back in the day, mirror universe was considered a very TOS thing. And uh, Next Gen didn't try not to do those stories, especially after, in the beginning. After, after the season one. Right. Well, that was really even out of the gate. And then they did Romulans because they were desperate because the Ferengi bombed and they didn't yeah. have the Borg ready to go. So they had to put the Romulans into places running enemies. But um, doing D Mirror Universe stories on DS9 was part of DS9 being the radical crazy fanboy show that got away with it. And so Voyager it was kind of like, hmm... Let's do a mirror universe concept where everybody gets to play alter egos, you know, and chew the scenery like this. But let's not have it be the mirror universe. Let's be more yeah. creative than that. I mean, that's kind <laughs> of the, that's kind of the attitude. 
Like, oh, we can do better than what, you know, the crazy original series did. I'm sad to say that's kind of the attitude. Mm. And, um, oh, look, it's the mess hall without tables. That's uh, very evil. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has to stand to eat their food. I like how they pan around and you get one of the Starscape windows as portals as the, as the museum crowd. Syrianmusician.museum.org. Yeah. Now, here's a mini K3. I've mentioned it before. When you get that reverse shot of the steps coming into the museum, this set oh, yeah. was so big. This set was reused as, uh, as a lab, as a body lab in Insurrection on a movie. Yeah, yeah. I remember they you re mentioned redressed that. it. But yeah, there you go. Bang. That set there was very famously, you know, they had the body tables down below. Which came Master first? Oh, this. Oh, it was built yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, they funneled some extra money to it. That's, that's why it's a, it's kind of a massive cool set. That's a huge so budget, the, Larry. For the camera a, is lovingly trying to get every inch of this set in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Larry, that's Larry, a that, huge budget for a Voyager episode. Well, I, this one time, they amortized the cost out because they had already planned to reuse it for Insurrection. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it was yeah, it was planned that way. I love the creativity of uh, of budgets <laughs> for productions. <gasps> Ooh. Hmm, we're having Someone a historical disagree. philosophical yeah. <laughs> I've carried <Kieran> friends. <laughs> Ooh. <gasps> the Kess of Ruins. Well, now we're, we're getting Your into... personal almanac. You didn't even know Janeway was a farmer, did you? <laughs> okay. Say what? We're getting into why history is so important. And, and yes. this gets back to the, yeah. the discovery quote that um, you and I have talked about before. You know, um, what was it, Larry? History is the way in which we understand the future? Or history? You, know, you mean the, uh, the discovery quote? Yeah. That I oh, uh, the past is the light by which we illuminate the future. Right. Yeah. So um, especially on this planet where it looks like there is still there's still conflict between but these different yeah um, yeah lingering well you've got the guy you're not teaching your history to my kids right right yeah um Sadly. history influences how we understand uh different people and uh there's no way you can understand the current systems that exist and cultures without really understanding the historical roots of that we've seen that we've seen that time and time again especially with a lot of um the police brutality that we witnessed and continue to witness, um, we have to understand the, the history of where these things come from. Yeah. That's a good idea to use a period tools to try to fix. Uh... <laughs> and then that's all you're, all you're allowed, all you've got. Far more. You think he wouldn't be the only one working on this? Nope. We, uh, oh, he's got a historic Voyager console there. Cairo says they got the warp core surprisingly correct. <laughs> it probably also would have cost too much money to change the look. Yeah. For them. It's a two tiered set.
<laughs> so that's interesting. This is uh, he's talking about his mobile emitter, which he still. Oh yeah, that's right. It's his fourth, se late fourth season. He'd had it for a year and a half. I'm a guest star. Give me a break. Attack <laughs> parties. Give or take a decade. <laughs> Plus, it's alliterative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's think about yeah. this. Does this catch us up to the burn? No, maybe. This is we were no. This is, this is after the burn. This is post burn. Yes. This is what, 100 years, 200 years after the burn? Ah, I think, episode I title. Think, I think. Mm hmm. Even my ego wouldn't say that. <laughs> Funny how he carries that prop. Oh, look, it's a big set we spent a lot of money on. Okay, we'll show it one more time. I guess they have hollow projectors in the museum as well. Larry, mm -hmm. I think your mobile emitter is also offline. Um, so we hear you, but your, vi your visual is frozen. Oh, no. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, what should I do? Should I? Am I frozen in the Skype window as well? Yeah, you're frozen in the Skype window. We can hear okay. you. We hear you just fine. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm going to back in and out of Skype. You may get the blue S if I'm not going to unstick. Charges. Nathaniel, that's a really great point about um, justice and historical truth and um, the concept of restorative justice. How we can we um, can we bring justice for uh, these historical crimes? Instead of chasing the female ends up. <laughs> Fighter shuttles. <laughs> Hedgehog. Oh my gosh, they're brutal. Yeah, I think... Um, Christoph and uh, Melanie, the discussion of what we get wrong in our history, I think, is, is, is a really good one. Um, I often wonder how 100 years, 200 years from now, how um, history is going to look at our, our current time.
All right. There is your video on. Oh, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Rose is asking how much, what time are we at at the video? Rose, we have about um, 21 minutes left in the video. We're about at the halfway point here. Mm -hmm. Larry, once again, I don't think your video is on. Uh, well, I am on. Okay, I'm going to come back out and come out then. We, we hear you. I think your video just needs to be turned on in Skype. It, okay, I, I know that often happens, but uh, I've turned it off, and now I'm turning it on again. Scott says, watch your mouth. Hedgehog is the 90s version of Shut Up, Wesley. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm going to back out and come in again. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Larry, we we hear you. We don't see you. No, I. Yeah. I don't have. Well, that's interesting. Ooh, shutting down the program. <sighs> well, so this is this is the thing about um, what makes what makes it so challenging. It's very hard to be open to ideas that might conflict with everything mm -hmm. you grew up with and everything you were taught. Um, Especially if you went to a lot of effort to. Uh, to think that you were looking at all, you know, alternatives, and that you're open-minded, and you had cool props in your set dressing. Uh, um, not only do we have this, we we have this psychological immune system that tries to find ways to justify our actions and make our actions consistent with our beliefs, but we also um, memory is a Memory is a very um, constructed thing. It can change with time. Memory is like a Wikipedia article. It can be changed by anyone. And so memory is fallible, and so is our understanding of history. And um, we, want to, we want to remain consistent with the things that we've believed our whole lives. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't just display the phaser like that. Maybe it just doesn't have any energy in there. 
it's just yeah it's just a <laughs> it's one of the bad props that didn't get painted right what do you mean it's that tricorder how weird <laughs> it's you again no, it's you <laughs> Well, uh, Scott just shared a wonderful uh, Carl Sagan uh, quotation. The truth may be puzzling. It may take some work to grapple with. It may be counterintuitive. It may deeply contradict. Uh, it may contradict deeply held prejudices. It may not be um, consonant with what we desperately want to be true, but our preferences do not determine what's true. Jesse says, since uh, Living Witness takes place in the 31st century around the burn, does that leave the door open for a Bob Picardo appearance on Discovery? I think every door is open. I think you, you, everything is possible now in this Star Trek universe. So, Ali, uh, Skype is not reading my little camera that I usually use, and it's reading my main Mac camera, but it's not, it's showing me a black screen, so, of myself. So, I'm going to just keep, I'm just, and I don't get it, so I'm going to pull out and come back. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Daniel, your question about is that why conspiracy theories pop up? Um, I mean, maybe maybe you can do another episode of Live Sport Live on conspiracy theories. I think that's a that's a cool idea. There's a lot of reasons why they pop up, and one of the reasons why is um, th the stories are usually very compelling. The conspiracy stories that come up um, can be they can have a lot of hooks that make it easy to remember the compelling stories. And then once you are also connected with other people who believe those stories and you have that sort of a support network, it's very hard to, um, to get those, uh, ideas sort of out of your head. Um, but I think that's a great idea. Maybe we should do that as an episode in the, in the future. Oh, he got he got uh, the captain's hair right. <laughs> oh, the Voyager conspiracy! It, it is a great conspiracy episode. Yeah, Nathaniel, your your point here is a good one. One of the problems I have with this episode is that we don't really come to an understanding of the events. We merely get another perspective, one provided by the EMH. His views could be um, itself idealized. I think you're right, and I think that's a problem with history. There is no absolute truth. Um, we're doing our best to understand, given all the perspectives and all the information we have at hand. Melanie says, uh, I have one of those tricorders. Um, Melanie, I've got one of those too. Mine is um, TNG era, not one of the Voyager eras.
that actor's voice is very familiar. I think he's he's definitely played another character on maybe even on Voyager. Hey, and he's back. Hey, Larry. Hey. Okay. This is the big camera. Okay. Better than nothing. I can't get the other one to register for some reason. Lo uh, Larry, have we? Do you know who this guest star is? Who's playing the? Um... Yeah, Roger Warrenitz. He had been. <clears throat> Or the the individual, not the uh, museum curator, but um, the oh. person on uh, on Voyager. His voice sounds so familiar to me. Except my diction. So at least the society does hold holograms to be sentient life yeah. forms. <laughs> uh, the good news is we'll, we'll uh, treat you as an equal being. The bad news is we'll treat you as a maligned equal being. And probably kill you. <laughs> <clears throat> well, they've got an arbiter. Oh, how you will pay. Or something. Transport up. <laughs> <laughs> She's not nearly as famous as O'Brien. <laughs> the most important Starfleet officer, officer ever. Uh -huh. Why? Yeah, notice that she's not in this episode. I think yeah. this is she's pregnant or having her baby. Roxanne, not Bellana. Right, right. There's both. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Uh, just fast forward to season seven, Doctor. You'll find out. <sighs> There's um, there are a few good episodes like this. Larry, of these uh, small moment encounters Voyager has with other cultures and uh, the long-term consequences of that. My other favorite one is, um, man, I'm not doing, I'm not doing well with the, um, the episode names today, Larry. It's okay. It's just Voyager. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the um, vo- uh, Voyager is frozen in the atmosphere. Uh, or uh, Voyager's in s- momentarily stuck in the atmosphere, but affects the oh, a wink of an eye, or wink, blink yes, of an eye. <clears throat> blink of an eye, yeah, yeah, big That's, difference, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a wink of an eye and a blink, of an eye. yeah. No, I mean one's the original series, one's Voyager. Are they sword fighting? No, wait. Oh, they're just. <laughs> this is our big mob of four extras. Okay. Oh, gosh, Larry. Well, this... Not the Akutagrams. <clears throat> Don't take down the Akutagrams. <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> they spent a lot of time drawing this. That was the most gentle pushdown ever. In yeah, a it was a very gentle pushdown. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Cairo says, they're tearing down all the Confederate statues. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting watching the scene with yeah, where we've been just the last couple of months. It rever- reverberates very differently, doesn't it, Larry? Oh. Um, and, and so symbols are really important um, culturally, and what what the museum represents, what these artifacts represent, um, symbolic meaning is really important, and. Who gets to tell their story? I mean, you're talking about, um, you're kind of joking about Confederate uh, soldiers and um, uh, Confederate statues, but there's a huge, um, those symbols are, are, they send a message that this is, this is something that we hold valuable here. And um, you can understand why there might be, um, depending on what you believe, there might be uh, strong feelings on, on, uh, Mm. about that. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a big building with doctors and nurses, but that's not important right now. Facts be damned. Watch me. Uh, this is a really mm-hmm. this is a really interesting place for this episode to to end and Voyager sometimes surprises us in these ways i yeah uh, I, I forgot this is oh wait what I forgot about all this it's the double reveal yeah oh my gosh place. I forgot <laughs> all good. And our own triumphant new soundtrack. 
The Dawn of Harmony. Sounds like a rejected name for Star Trek uh, (laughs) 5 or something. That will be an episode title for Strange New Worlds. Yeah. The Dawn of Harmony. You're still getting my camera feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good, Larry. Okay. It's just been some weird stuff going on today. Oh, look. It's his... uh, Fourth season PR shot. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Well, uh, that was, that was really lovely. I, um, I really enjoyed watching that one, Larry. Um, there's, um, thanks. I, cause it's too late to repick now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, good pick on that. Good, um, good idea to, uh, to bring that, uh, that episode here. There's um, there's a great point there that I want to ask our guests about. Um, you know how much how much does it matter to get the facts right versus for people who are involved to tell their story. Mm-hmm. You know, and I I think there's um, um, you're never gonna get when someone is telling their story. Um, and the jur- when when someone's telling their story, you're never going to get the 100% truth because we can't go back in time. We can't, we aren't holograms that can be brought forward in time and tell exactly what, what happened. Yeah, a living witness. Yeah, you can't have a living witness to the past. Um, however, people can tell their story and um, tell their story how they see it. And there'll be inaccuracies there, but if we can capture enough stories from enough people, um, through that does some larger truth emerge. Um, and I think that's, that's part of what's going to be the, the journey with this Voyager documentary. Yeah. Um, Speaking of that, are you seeing uh, Dave and uh, you've got the life support? Yeah, let me check. Let me check here. They're there. And they're under each under their own name. Um, can you have them either send me a message or, yeah, if you could have them send me a message, then uh, that should. This is where Skype breaks down. Okay, folks, what did you think about uh, this episode and? Um, looking at it now from a 2021 lens. And then also, um, what questions do you have about the Voyager documentary? Um, let us know, and we will... Uh... Am I in? You are in. Hey, there you yeah. go. I was just Hello. about to... Hello, Dave. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Larry, uh, we got Dave on here. Would you like to do some introductions for us? Uh, yeah, well, is Joe should be coming too. I think Joe, if, if I could figure it out, Joe can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> He's the technical expert. I haven't used Skype, and my God, I don't know how long, but yeah, I, I know. We have easy to figure yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> no, we know. I'm trying to get my, my blocking bill. Let's see. No, I'm good. Okay. It's kind of a throwback <laughs> for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to tell you guys right off the bat, I'm speaking to you right above the stage. Uh, the stage is where Voyager was shot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it goes. In the office. OK. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. That's right called above. the dryer building. Right. But it's just yeah, it's not really a building. <laughs> it's yeah. the offices above eight and nine. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Which were all uh, Star Trek offices back in the day, as you know better than I do. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of the most of those were I mean, uh, so the art department was on the TNG and Voyager art department was at the the left end of that row. And Mike Westmore's office was at the right end. And then Jimmy Meese, the set decorator, had his in the middle. I forget the exact places, but um, yeah, maybe that's where I am. I'm right next to what they call the Sunset Boulevard. Uh, offices because they were featured in the film Sunset Boulevard. Oh, okay. The building okay. looks exactly the same. No. Yeah. Dave, what's you know. there now, if anything? Uh, below me right now is NCISLA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the last Star Trek filmed here was um, the motion uh, 2009, J.J. Uh, Abrams. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Ali, are you getting uh, – did you get a thing from uh, Joe just then on Skype? I didn't. Um, okay. I'm looking, but I'm not yet. So, Dave, we just watched uh, Living Witness. Uh, by the way, yeah. I'm uh, Ali Matu. Good to, good to meet you. Thanks, yeah. for, Sorry. thanks for being <laughs> on. Ali Matu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I listened in. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Um, we, were, we were having a blast watching this. I'm getting Joe in. So, you guys. Uh, so, yes. So, Dave, we, this, and I told you, I, we chose this episode. Uh, Dave, everybody, is the executive producer uh, at 455 Films, worked on uh, all of Shatner's documentaries, The Captain's. Chaos on the Bridge, yep, uh, yep. worked with Adam Nimoy on For the Love of Spock, and most recently worked with Ira on uh, What We Left Behind, and now right, they're right. working on the Voyager documentary. Yeah. I'm working on getting Joe in, so you well, all okay. take it. And this is Dr. Ali, my co-host here. Do- uh, he's a geek psychologist. He he knows his stuff on both sides of the fence. So. Right. You're in good hands, Dave. So, good. Dave, I, I think what we would love to just get started with is if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the Voyager documentary, the project. I know um, you're going to be launching um, r- launching this wider very soon, but we'd love to just get yeah. hear your thoughts about it and, and where the project is. Well, I just felt that after Deep Space Nine, I couldn't drop Star Trek. It, it What we left behind was such a success critically, and I'm such a fan of the franchise, it just seemed logical to continue. And I spoke to CBS, and they were like, yeah, we're in. And uh, we filmed on the Star Trek cruise last uh, March. And we filmed from March 1st to the 8th, yeah. and then the world shut down, Yeah, essentially. So, Joe. <laughs> hey. There we go. Yeah. Hi, guys. My work was not in vain. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I said, Joe, it's a sad day if you if I could figure it out, but you can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I haven't been on Skype for a while, so uh, <laughs> that's sorry that's about what that. Dave all said. this ancient twentieth yeah. century technology. I but know. now that we're on, I mean, it works well. It, yeah, it's, definitely. It's fine. So yeah, to finish, just uh, so we started the project, and then again, the world shut down. Yeah. Um, we have been able to continue with some additional interviews. We interviewed Brandon Braga. We've interviewed Garrett. We've interviewed uh, Robbie McNeil. But uh, now we really want to take this, as you said, wider. It's time for us to – we need to do what we exactly what we did with what we left behind and for the love of Spock. It's really – we need the fan support to do this documentary. And it's licensing from CBS. It's – you know, we're going to get back into physical production. We're hoping to get back to conventions uh, if those start up when. Yeah, we're all hoping to get back to conventions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're hoping to get back yeah, anywhere. Boy. I just want to leave this yeah. room. <laughs> so our goal is to make this scope of this as wide as what we left behind. And that's why we're starting this crowdfunding on Monday. And we really need the fan support. Joe, what do you want to say about the film? Yeah. Well, you know, the big difference besides them being a different series between what we left behind and the Voyager doc is what we left behind. We actually started in 2013. Yeah. And we're shooting interviews on the side every, you know, couple times a year for a few years. So we already had a bunch of material that we've put together. And then based on our crowdfunding experience with what we left behind it allowed us to open the scope of the film up and we shot a lot more Mm -hmm. in-depth interviews and a lot more with a lot more focus so we don't have that backlog like we had with what we left behind but we do have more focus and we've done been doing our research and preparing for what we think are the themes but we we have to interview all those people and ultimately uh the interviews will reveal what the story is to us yeah. Right. Well, you know what what we left behind was really like an Ira drew. It was like Ira's passion project, right? No doubt. Yeah. So, but that has it because at the t- and then at the time, a lot of fan. I mean, I knew that, but a lot of time at the fans at the time were thinking, okay, there's the DS9. I was kidding about this a minute ago before you came on. 
Yeah. But a lot of people, it's like with the with the HD Blu-raying. It's like, well, TNG got the Blu-rays right. upgrade treatment. Why about Voyager and DS9? And it's it's a it's a matter of money and a lot of things. But on this one, it's like, well, there's the DS9. Do- like these things just fall from you know manna from heaven. <laughs> and and I you know like, well, where's the Voyager documentary? Here's the DS9 one. And not only does that have to be funded and made, but the DS9 was an IRA-driven project, and it's not like none of the producers or actors well, but there was no central person to this, right? It kind of this is a lot more organically just of its own product, right? Yeah, I mean, the Voyager, uh, sorry, what we left behind started, I had just finished Chaos on the Bridge with Shat, yeah. and I knew Bill was kind of done with the Star Trek documentaries, or not necessarily, he just didn't have an organic connection to Deep Space Nine. Right. He was in Generations, he was friends with Patrick Stewart, he knew that cast, uh, Roddenberry, that all appealed to him. But on this, I knew... I I was I'm a huge Deep Space Nine fan, and it was really my passion for it that led me to do it. And I approached Ira and said, "What do you think? Do you want to do you want to do you essentially want to step into Shatner's role as interviewer?" And he was in from the jump. Hey, mm-hmm. hey Dave, I was yeah. thinking about this. I don't think we you had we had finished chaos i think it was we were in vegas and we were at a screening of get a life you're right we we had done a lot of chaos but it wasn't finished but we knew that bill was not going to jump in right into deep yeah. space nine yeah that's that's what it was yeah that's so here, idea, but i read and you spoke after that screening mm-hmm. and he was very happy get a yeah. life yeah yeah and um, that's what yeah, we've I remember kind of, we've given him a yeah. whole nother career. He's been in how many of our documentaries now? Four? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he'll be in this one. Probably not, but you never know. I'll just yeah. <laughs> have him introduce it. Hey guys. Hey, it's Ira Bear. Don't worry, this is not a DS9 documentary, but I should keep it coming. Hang on, it's a Voyager. Don't no, be, I'm I, out of here. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised by anything Ira does. You never know. Yeah. You never know. But here we have, we're going at, we've already interviewed Brannon. Rick Berman has agreed. Jerry Taylor has agreed. I have been telling people about Jerry. That's that's yeah. that's so important right now. Because, yeah. 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 Don't forget we got Andre Berman on us. You're right. Well. Oh, yeah. everybody's important, but Jerry is, yeah. she's been a recluse and Oh, who wants to hear from me? I did interviews back then. And no, yeah. to get her on camera is just really because there's a whole generation that I call them the Janeway Army. But there's a whole yeah. generation of people, especially uh, young women that have come to idolize and, and look up to Janeway. And um, and that's all Jerry. And she deserves to yeah. talk about it and get the credit and, and be on camera talking about we, it. We had actually we had planned to. Yeah. Uh, interview her to go go to her home back in january right. but you know we were making plans for that back in november but uh october november but uh you know just the reality of the world we're living in kind of changed all that so but uh, we yeah. do know that uh she's got at least one of her vaccine vaccination shots so yeah i'm yeah. hoping to get to her as soon as possible i'm, I'm really happy to hear everyone. that you you did sort of <laughs> pause a little bit during this this worst part of covid because i think so yeah, many I of just, us after we saw what doors. you left behind yeah. were just um uh, not only the story but the the whole quality of the production was 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 so phenomenal um our chat people are saying um there's so much love for it and then i think someone bought it twice accidentally they loved it so much so excellent i <laughs> <We> love that <laughs> but it was such a lovely production and i think we we were also anxiously mm-hmm. awaiting the the same level of care and love and passion being put into voyager so as 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 much as it is hard to wait this whole time i'm glad you did take that approach well, that's precisely why we did, because there, there's no way we're going to do a documentary over Zoom. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just it's not right. ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And that really was our only option. So, uh, yeah, I think we're I think we made the right choice. You don't want to come back 20 years from now and everybody will look at the catalog of your works and go, yeah. oh, yeah, that was the pandemic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can't go into details, but I also work with a, a, a theatrical marketing company and. I recently uh, was involved on the post-production of an interview between two big 
Hollywood people. And the production issues of shooting in COVID, under COVID conditions, you know, people are being sent cameras or having a crew the day before set up a camera in their, their home or wherever they're going to interview them. And then they connect through a Skype or a, you know, a Zoom or something like that, but they're also recording the cameras. And there's just so many things that can go wrong. And it's so people are distant. And it's hard to, to really get people to be themselves. And, but it's just on a technical no, it just it's really it's really difficult. So, you know, we're really hoping that, um, you know, by the the summer we can be back into a production with adhering to covid safety protocols. But a lot more people will be vaccinated, including hopefully all of us on the crew. And uh, that's the way you make a film. Yeah, Charlotte yeah. is saying um, it's not just a quality issue. I'm glad you all are being safe. And um, Cairo, a longtime, uh, longtime member of our community, says, as anyone going on video calls knows, I have the What We Left Behind supporter poster on the wall. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about this is um, especially with what you left behind. There's something about this time frame that we're, we're so many decades now um, from Deep Space Nine. It struck the community. It meant so much. Why do you think these projects do impact the community in the, in the way that they do? Well, I think especially with a, a show like, well, Deep Space Nine and Voyager, it's you now have generations mm -hmm. of fans. Mm -hmm. And you've got a whole new group of people discovering this on streaming. That's what we found with what we left behind. We kind of hit right when Deep Space Nine was having its renaissance. And I think the same thing right. is happening with Voyager. And plus the issues are still so relevant today. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, and then the, the, the last thing I'll say is it's the passion of the people involved, all of the actors, all of the writers, everybody wants to do this and memorialize this show. Mm -hmm. well, so how many how many Star Trek people creatives have you talked not just actors but especially backstage have you talked to where they've had and it's a documentary so 20 years have gone by 30 years have gone by yeah. they've had other work they're a functioning perfectly fine creative functioning industry person but right. they'll still say 20 years later 30 years later you know like yes thank you for my paycheck for my health benefits and all that but nothing compares to my Star Trek time it's no, like, that's the Okudas, that's Herman Zimmerman, Dennis McCarthy, all of these people, David Livingston. And by the way, we plan to talk to a lot of these people yeah. on Voyager. Well, well, you, well, you have to keep in mind, you know, the, all the shows were separate, but all those people that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, they worked on all those shows. Yeah, they yeah. were together for 15, 17 years. Yeah. They, they were a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've worked with a lot i mean i've worked with dave now for almost uh, almost a decade now um, yeah and you know that's a that's a relationship that's that transcends just we're working together yeah. i mean he and i have a unique thing where we choose to work together you know we have our other things that we do as well but i you know i've i've been fortunate to work with a, a lot of people that i consider friends for many years and so um that's great but the star trek family is just such a unique thing in in Hollywood and mm -hmm. in filmmaking and television making. And so it's, and then the, uh, on top of that, the conventions bring people together over the years so that there's always an excuse to get to see each other. And I think that bonds people even more. So it's, it's yeah. a very fascinating dynamic. And by people, Trek. you mean the actors and, and staff crew. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bond, yeah, even even more than that. Hey, we've got a question. I'm trying to find who asked it. I think it was Anna Marie. So, Dave, this is for you, and I and I meant to ask you this, too, when it came up. Yeah. Um, so do you remember what that we were laughing about, how you pitched a script back in the day that you got a rejection from Lolita when she was <laughs> script coordinator? You met Somebody, uh, they asked what, what if you remember what the plot was, your pitch for TNG. I, I don't know if I really want to get into it. It actually <laughs> ended up being... It was I'd like, like to hear this, Dave. Come on, we're documenting history here, Dave. Come on. It was something about a piggyback transporter accident, and then they ended up doing something similar. I think it was in the seventh season. What's the episode where Crusher and uh, Picard are stranded on the planet? Oh, right. Oh, to 
together, attached. Yeah. There were similarities to that, but the truth is I didn't actually write it. I sent in the request and got the Paramount form letter back from yeah. Lolita. So I didn't actually get rejected. Oh, okay, okay. I'll say that. But you got but her, okay. the letter. You got the letter. the letter. <laughs> and I was so excited at the time in Connecticut to get something from Paramount Studios. And now I've been <laughs> yeah. here for a decade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, I've got another indulgent question here, go, going back to Chaos on the Bridge. And I can't believe I've never asked you this since I've seen you. Because uh, I've just been very envious. At the time he was working on the show, he did some interviews. There's two or three interviews out there. But then Maury Hurley like, left in a bad way from the show yep. and then didn't talk. And I know about a year or two or three before you did you did the the documentary i was trying to get i was trying to talk to him about the creation of the borg and q who and yeah. all of that and it's like you know this is we'll talk about this one thing you should get your credit for being in on the creation of the borg was kind of my and he was like ah you know i'm just an old fart you don't want to hear from me and i saw that he wasn't doing i just want to know how in the world did was it just did you just give him some money i mean two how words did you get, how did you get it to sit down and do that yeah two words william shatner because Bill and Maury had worked together in the oh, tech war. Okay. Joe, was it on Tech War? Tech War. Tech yeah. War, yeah. So they oh, knew okay. each other. So we reached out, and Maury's like, if there's anybody I'm going to talk to, you, talk to, it's you, Bill. And wow. there's two people. And by the way, we loved Maury. Um, well, you did a great service, because that's, I think that's the only interview he's done in 20, 30, or whatever. It was on Star yeah. Trek. And, and I can say Maury loved Chaos. He, he he gave us our whole theme that first that, that day we were interviewing him in uh, uh, JPL wacky doodle mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was the whole the whole thing but the two people the gets I would say and it's all because of Bill were Maury and John Pike mm -hmm. yeah John Pike was a big one too um, but yeah we were Joe and I were just talking about we have that same. You guys were talking about a living witness, the different perspectives. And yeah. you know, all people can do is tell their version, what they remember. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily what happened, but to them it's true. And we have that whole section in the beginning. Joe, what are some of the quotes? Gene was wonderful. Gene was awful. Yeah, Gene. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He pissed off all his friends. Oh, yeah. he was people he was, loved him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, and it's that's it's not just true looking back in history. It's true about you know how many times you see somebody's been robbed and there was witnesses and everybody recalls you know somebody right. wearing something different. Right. And, oh, he was tall. No, he was short. You know, that's just that's just people. And yeah. so, it, just, and as I I was listening to you, Ollie, talking about yeah. all you can do is get a bunch of different as many different perspectives together, and that will sort of reveal a picture of a truth. But it is, yeah. war, it's, it's all war through. Everybody's, everybody has their own take and view on things. Well, well, that's why, you know, I wanted to help support, you know, and again, we're, we're talking here in large part because in two days, right, March 1st is the Indiegogo campaign for the yeah. doc, and a lot of people have been salivating to jump uh, on that, but that's why, for Life Support Live, we have our normal structure, which we didn't do today, but mm -hmm. we've done watch-alongs, and I thought, well, let's have you as guests, and let's pick a, a show that we can watch. That's, and it's like, of all of Star Trek, it's like the one that leaped to mind was, A, a Voyager show, nice, but all, you know, Living Witness, and it's all about getting history wrong or drawing the wrong inferences, or right. even when you think you've got, yeah, the first-hand information, how you can still you know, go askew. And, um, and yeah, chaos on the bridge is probably the best example. I mean, although or what we left behind, there's moments in what we left behind where it gets, yeah. yeah. Where you got the, you got, uh, the Rashomon. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. The Rashomon. Yeah. The, um, yep. the, Dave, I think you mentioned this about how Star Trek continues to have everyday relevance to us and just watching living witness right now, um, there's so much there about about understanding history, but the very end with uh, with them rushing to the museum, oh, yeah, the riot, yeah. that had a whole new. I think we all had the mm -hmm. same reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, yeah. Star Trek is this uh, the story that we can keep going back to and keep revisiting. And um, Cairo in our comments section says, I also wonder uh, if, if hearing about Janeway in Star Trek Prodigy 
will lead a whole new generation to Voyager. So I think we are, not only is Voyager having this moment, but I think people are going to continue to rediscover it as Star Trek Prodigy uh, comes online. So I don't know if you could if you could quite share right now, but I would love if if there is something as as you've now been revisiting Voyager, um, and also as as you've started this project and had some of these interviews, what what are you revisiting either about the stories or the behind the scenes that is uh, that you're seeing in a new way now, as much as uh, as we all did with Living Witness right now. Joe, you want to speak to that? Yeah, well, I think the one of the things that probably will be, well, not probably, will be a big theme that we'll discuss is, you know, living in, uh, in and now we're in a Me Too moment mm. in our time, and mm -hmm. just how women were treated and perceived, not just on mm -hmm. television, but also behind the camera mm -hmm. in on that show, that will be discussed. Um, you can't not uh, look back and and see things in a uh, in a new light and so you know obviously it's really up to our, the people that we talk to what they want to share but we we want to ask all these questions to, to you know because it is relevant to now and but it, all these things that uh, are just coming to light have been going on for a long time so well that that that's the the biggest thing i can i could think of that uh you have to look back on and reappraise yeah and i i think we'll be so excited to see those discuss I, those <laughs> have been discussions that um have been happening a lot in the fandom community is voyager's role in giving us the first female captain but also Absolutely. um and also giving us this wonderful mm -hmm. evolution of seven of nine who is also in some ways so representative of where we were <laughs> With gender roles and and right. everything pre me too, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm very much looking forward to to seeing that conversation. Well, we will delve into that, and I also our hope is to look at the other side. I mean, you have to remember that Voyager was the flagship show of yep. UPN, so there were all the studio and the Paramount right. pressures as well, and that's another which we explored and what we left behind with Carrie McCluggage. Uh, and Chaos in the Bridge with John Pike. Yeah. So we intend to look at that also from the perspective of the studio and all the pressures. But what I think is most uh, telling is how well the show holds up. Yeah. So many, everything about it, and it's the technical excellence. It's And Larry, you can speak to this. Your your wife can, can speak to uh, you know <laughs> all, all of what was going on and the quality yeah. of the work. And it really shines. And it's also, as I said, it's the pride of the actors. Kate is so proud of the influence that Janeway has had. And uh, Joe Shirt is actually I'm in the middle of emailing them right now. That's a major place where Voyager had a tremendous impact. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, Roxanne is so humble. And she's oh. off being working director right uh, now. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I mean, yeah. she just takes a mo once or twice she'll do a convention a year and she always loves it. But yeah. she's like, you know, I'm working director. I'm not going to cons and signing and talking to fans in long lines. But yeah. she, what Bellana, I mean, you know, Bellana yeah. is a character even. And and I guess somewhere along the way, not to divert too much, but I, I guess you're going to kind of get into the, I guess, the tragedy of, of Jennifer and, and Absolutely. Kev. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely, yes. I mean, yeah. Jennifer and Cass are, so are good. part part of the show, and she's so, she's she's excellent. I mean, there's some she has some great episodes mm -hmm. yeah. when you know, especially when, when they write for her, when they really give her a, a good story. She she did she yeah. did great, and yeah. uh, and, and Warlord and yeah 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 Warlord was pretty spectacular. Elogium, you know, a lot she had a lot to do in that, you know. And I got to say to switch gears a little bit. Uh, you know, we interviewed Robbie McNeil and, you know, he loves Threshold and I can see why. I mean, the end might be a little wacky, but he gets to do a lot. Of, he gets to show a lot of rage yes. as an actor yeah. in that episode. And we I all think of the, ba the Salander babies, but yeah. if you go back and think the other 95 percent of the show is really a creepy Brandon horror show and yeah. he pulls and, and Robbie pulls it off. The staff. Yeah. 
ripping his tongue off and all of that is that's just that's a an episode we were going to delve into in tuvix of course oh, oh yeah tuvix I, I yes into tuvix. yeah yeah i hope well you were talking about the network now, this is all it's like oh i'm suddenly caring about voyager again no the <laughs> The the whole thing, and I remember, I remember you mentioned Janet. I remember her coming home every day and going, "They're watering it down. They're watering it down." And where the pilot was versus the next three or four shows, and how the network made them back off of all the. They set all the conflict up to have conflict because they're going away from Klingons and Romulans, and you know, there's right. nothing familiar. It's all we've got to carry our conflict with us. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and but then everything that was inherent all got. You know, oh look, the Maquis and the Starfleet—they're just—you know—they got along. It, you know, uh, yeah. Alana yeah. punches out Tom, uh, the engineer, and then uh, Carrie, and then oh, a show, a show or two later, it's mostly she, over she, with, except for Seska, yeah, who's yeah. really a spy and not a Maquis anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. You know. It, well, it's Iris, it was just it, it's Iris is fond of saying Voyager drew all of the studio's fire. Yeah. So yeah. Deep Space Nine kind of just got to do. They kind of left it alone. And yeah. all the attention was focused on Voyager because it was the flagship. Better or worse. Yeah. You know. I mean, they, it, you know, the, from the studio perspective, they were really concerned, very concerned about Kate's hair. Yeah. So yeah. That was that was a, that was a priority for them. You know, so. Which it showed yeah. in the episodes. I mean, the, the constant yeah. evolution of Kate's hair. Um yeah, well, Larry, you hey, mentioned hey, conflict twice. The pilot, I, there's the, she had her way they reshot. Yeah, and they, then the bun came later, and they had to go back to reshoots on location. It was That's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we um, I heard Tuvix evoke, which is one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> and Larry, you're talking about conflict here. I think Tuvix is such a a fant- where Tuvix ends is um is is such a, a a dark and difficult place and such an impossible decision and one of the things that sticks out to me as i revisit voyager is i, I remember voyager uh when i first saw it as being this this happier trek um right. but when when you do delve into the episodes there is such diversity of of darker storylines and yeah. you have bride of chaotica but you also have things like tuvix and and um or death wish yes uh, a- you, mm-hmm. I, one of my personal yeah, yeah. favorites. Yes. Yeah, yes. Gar- Garrett Graham's performance is just off the charts. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, Brad Dourif. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah. Meld? Yeah, what yeah Meld character? is one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That Brad, Brad, and, and uh, Tim. Tim, that's an a- uh, acting tour de force from, yeah. from Tim in that episode. And did you guys it's, give Tim his props for directing on? Uh, yes. I, yes. Yeah. Up front, we did. Good. Yeah, we yeah. just we caught that uh, this time. We uh, um, I wasn't aware that he had directed Living Witness. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. Yeah, I thought he did a terrific job. Yeah, you know, that that's something that I've I've heard from um, from a lot of fans is um, Voyager is one of the most uh, rewatchable Star Trek series because you can you can just pop in an episode and it does have more of a syndication feel as Next Generation does, um, yeah. where it doesn't really matter where you are in the seasons, but. Um, there's such uh, you, you never quite know what you're going to get. You're going to get a scary episode. You're going to get a fun episode, an exploration, a space adventure, uh, mm-hmm. social commentary. Um, Voyager is is um, incredibly rewatchable. Yeah, I agree. And I'll make a, a confession. I I think this Living Witness. I don't think I'd ever seen it. Hmm. I think it was one of the episodes that I just missed. I've seen most of them. So how happy was I when Larry said? living witness and i start watching i'm like i don't remember how this is going to end mm. so it was exciting to, the, to the double that. twist really catches yeah. 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 yeah 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 i forgot like about the said, double I, twist i you but know, do you guys I, have an explanation why the gloves i didn't get the gloves they're well, evil didn't you immediately tell they were evil they make them sinister <laughs> i yeah. guess gloves are that sinister okay <laughs> gloves when you don't need them are sinister, yeah. I think. And it's a gloveless universe. No one else has ever yeah. has gloves. So <laughs> and, and, they, and they, all, they, the they had an almost stormtrooper vibe to them. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. a little S-esque feel. So. And it was good think, to let them do their mirror universe thing, essentially. The actors must yeah. have loved that. Yeah. yeah. I, well. I laugh about how Next Gen and DS9 uh, and Voyager don't have a mirror universe. It was, I was saying during our, during our commentary that, that, 
it's another case of where you know TNG didn't lean on anything original series, include and the mirror universe was probably they probably thought you know I'm sorry they probably thought at the time out of the gate it was so hokey, and then Voyager is is not gonna you know DS9 Iron the guys are such radicals going back to TOS things well, yeah right. hell let's do a mirror yeah and everybody you know Rick and they're rolling their eyes and then Voyager it's that idea of yeah give the idea the actors some chin let them loose yeah yeah let them loose but yeah. we're going to do it on a different higher plane than just right. the, you know <laughs> I, I can totally you can totally see the personalities and the eras of the shows coming through hey um um uh somebody well i mentioned this and i think you did just then it does give a different vibe um the riot we're talking about living witness yeah I, oh god yeah. Is yeah. there anything else about the themes in Living Witness that that ring home well, for you guys when well, you're doing? Well, 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 Dave and I were talking about yeah. this earlier too. Another line that happens that just resonates. before the the, yeah. the, the, that, the riot that resonates is that uh, the conflict between the two races and the it's always the, about uh, race. The, it's always about race. Mm. Yeah. Know? And mm. so to put it in context. You know, the one thing is with what we left behind when we we went back and you know, uh, brought up a, a couple episodes from Deep Space Nine. And a lot of people, fans and comments said, oh, the show was so prescient and the show was so mm -hmm. prescient. And this is one where people say, oh, the show is so prescient. And it's really not prescient. I mean, there's, it, it, first of all, Star Trek writers, are they're, they're, they know literature, they know history. They're very learned, learned people and they understand human nature. And there's plenty of examples of human nature of these things throughout the, our history. So they were just drawing upon that uh, in showing a story that could take place in the future. And if you haven't experienced it in your time, maybe it feels, oh, wow, that would mm. never happen. But obviously we can see it happen. Or look at this quaint old here. idea we're pulling back from decades ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then uh, you know it 20 years later, oh, look what's suddenly sadly fresh and happening again. A riot over, yeah. The yeah. line, an early line that I that jumped out at me again, where he says, you're not teaching, our kids aren't going to learn your history right. like this. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. It's going on. Dave, but the other thing is the poignancy, I think, of Robert Picardo's <laughs> performance yeah. and how he misses his crewmates and that his reflection <laughs> and missing them. That's a theme that we're going to be exploring. Uh, yes. Dave, we got a great comment. You asked about gloves, and um, Tim in our comments says, well, Con wore a glove. So I think that might, oh. uh, <laughs> that might answer that. Uh, Good point. Okay. Uh, I'll buy that. <laughs> so what I, one of my favorite things about um, um, the DS9 documentary was um, the writer's room breaking uh, season eight. And yeah. um, that really got my mind going and my imagination going. My my one frustration with Voyager was I, I always wanted them to arrive back in the Alpha Quadrant um, in the beginning of season seven and then see see the fall up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm wondering if um, if that has come up or will come up in any of your conversations if if they had more time or if we could have seen and, and now we've seen what's happened to seven of nine uh, we'll probably see a little bit of, of what happens to Janeway I'm guessing with with Star Trek Prodigy but um, mm -hmm. is that about seven on Picard right where is where is Prodigy and do you guys know where is it in the timeline is it 20 years later is it set during Voyager I mean it's animated so they can do whatever they want she that I haven't seen a year. She's a captain. I, oh. I, I we they were saying admiral, but yeah. then I saw references to captain in the press this week. So I haven't heard anybody say exact. But it's at least, and she's not been a captain long. I think at the time of Voyager, within a year or two. So it's it's within a year or two of Voyager or later. So we'll see. Uh, we don't know. Right, because she was promoted in Nemesis. Right, she right. was admiral. Yeah, yeah you saw yeah. her as the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that we definitely want to delve into in the documentary is is the Janeway effect mm, right. upon mm -hmm. young women mm -hmm. entering into the sciences and engineering, and um, and that's that's something that I believe why she was thrilled to come back to doing Janeway because this is a show that's aimed at at kids, and I think specifically at young women. Uh, to inspire them to go into the sciences. So, 
um, I think that's 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 a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it's just it's just fascinating that when we entered into doing this documentary, that was not we didn't know anything about uh, Prodigy. Mm. No, I didn't these know. all these things have come up while we're <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. us. Thank you, thank you, Nickelodeon. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, God. Thank but you. What Alan. really saves us is, uh, or I think is interesting about the documentary, it's the only in person celebration that the cast. I was going to say yes. Got. On that cruise, that was it. Because we were set to go to Germany, I think in April. We were yeah, going to go to Vegas. Yeah. We were going to go to London, and all canceled. Well, um, I was thinking though, and the, but but the silver lining of that is it's rougher to get everybody now, and and that atmosphere won't just be part of the the vibe of the shoot. But on the other hand, for all the Voyager fans that feel, and I know they're out there, that feel totally cheated. Because they got robbed of their. This is like the hugest cherry ever that to, on the top. This is like yeah. the the rescue of the lost Voyager anniversary year, right? Well, I have to thank CBS and uh, ECP, the cruise people. They opened up. We had run of that ship, right, Joe? I think oh, it's yeah. the most. Those eight days we shot. We had a couple of eighteen to twenty hour days, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty exhausting. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was well, only what six of us, seven of us. Yeah, oh my uh, gosh. Just doing everything. Well, it was amazing that the crews, much less you getting to shoot there, but it was amazing that crews like squee. It's like oh. it's like the doors shutting on the on the Janolan in we, Relic. We got we got back to Miami <laughs> on, 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 on on March eighth, yeah. and what was on the fourteenth or the seventeenth? Yeah. We were in lockdown. Yeah. But by the ninth, Joe, the uh, that Monday, the CDC was saying. Don't yeah. go on cruises because remember there was a cruise ship yeah. stuck off the coast right. of San Francisco. Right. Yeah, at right. the exact same time. But the wonderful thing is because we have talked to the cruise people, no one that they know of became ill. There was no. We just it was the perfect yes timing. It was incredible. Well, that, that when, one did ship, I, when did I when well, did I go to when did I have to run to Paramount and pull all our hard drives out of the office? I think that was when the city shut down March 20th, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't that long? I got, I got I, a call from Dave. I was in Thursday Connecticut. Thursday night at, at eight, 8. Yeah, he's in Connecticut. I'm at home. It's raining. It's 8 p.m. He goes, Joe, they're shutting down the lot. In all three our hours. Store, all our media is there. They're shutting it down by midnight. I had to run over in my little mini and load up. <laughs> <laughs> every hard drive I could get in my car and uh before it was lost forever home. yeah or well before, before well, it would have been yeah it would yeah. it would have been locked up for six yeah. months and we actually we were coming out with the the captain's collection I had a bunch of work to do for that wow. we, you know we added extra interviews for that but we had a lot of early yeah did yeah were matter of fact you, you, you've seen the extended Maury Hurley interview and in uh, oh in that oh that was precious I, yes yeah. yeah so have you been editing the footage that you have during uh during the pandemic since since you were able to pull some of it have you been working on it or has it just yeah, been sort of we, it and and going through it yeah 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 we've had yeah we haven't been actually editing but uh per se other than we did well we did we've done some internal things uh to 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 show potential distributors what we have from the cruise. But um, yes, the transcription, reading it, thinking about, uh, you know, what new information has been brought up that we want to follow up on with other people and maybe go back to the, the subjects we've already done. So yeah, yeah, we do, we do have that. Our focus for the last couple months though have, has really been on focusing on our Indiegogo campaign and, and, just getting everything so together let, for that. let's talk about that i would um, ask what yeah i yeah. was gonna say what's some perks coming up what's some things we can talk about Pe for the egogo people are really excited people really want to know well, yeah. well we have what's coming we up. have a, a, a few cool shirts that uh there is a page up now it doesn't start till the first but there's the page is up now right yeah you, you yeah but you won't see sure. Yeah. You won't right. see all those those perks until you won't see the perks until monday i you know we will have some the, uh, you know, uh, things that I, I could probably leak, uh, things that people really like from what we left behind. Yes. We had some <laughs> pin sets. Uh, so I think uh, 
people are going to be pretty happy to see some of that and the shirt designs. Well, I, I've yeah. been hit up to put into a couple of things. So yeah. we have we have some some what we call away missions and and some Zoom meetings and yeah, there's going to be some th some things that uh, the diehard fans are really going to be excited by. I don't want to give too much of that away. It's going to you're going to see it in uh, less than 48 hours. I think what we can tease, Joe, is that don't be surprised if you see perks from members of the other casts. Ooh. It might not even just be limited to Voyager. Ooh. Yeah. Well, yep. I've already seen Ira tweeting in support of this. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and speaking of that, I see Ryan in the chat great. here. So uh, shout out to Ryan. Um, oh, great. Who's hey, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan T. Husk, who's helping you all out with that, I know. And Joe, can we, I think we can discuss, we can uh, tell them what we're working on with what we left behind. There is some news on that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, do tell. There's going to be uh, an extended writer's room. Oh, Not yes. Today, yeah. But you're going to get to see what those guys did over the course of six and a half hours distilled probably down to about five you're sweeping up the editing room floor is what you're saying <laughs> I, well, well, it's, it's actually yes it's ira's kind of passion ira wants that whole day out he wants people to see what actually goes on and how a story is broken because the the key is they those guys as you saw in the film they took it so seriously that was not just for fun. Yeah. They and were. They picked it right up from where they yeah, left they, off. Yeah, they were just right back from where they left off. They yeah. got up to speed in maybe 10 minutes. 50, after some joking around, boom, they were they were and, in. And it's not just for for Star Trek fans. It's for people that want or that are right, interested right. in writing right. process. Yes. It's an educational yes. tool. And so that was, uh, that was something that Ryan, uh, Ryan, Ira was very passionate from the beginning with the writer's room that it, it was such a wonderful day to be a fly on the wall in that room just to experience that uh we you know we all want everybody to see what that was um, um it was, that was one of my favorite parts of the whole documentary yeah. so i can't wait to see that where um is that going to be a where is that going to be and when when can We're we not anticipate quite that? sure yet okay okay yeah but at minimum, a Blu-ray DVD release for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. okay. I'm very, okay. very excited. Is this the first time you've talked about this? Did we just break no. some news here? Uh, well, no, actually, Ira's referenced it. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I but believe not, not a lot of Ira. Yeah. I think we talked about it with Ryan and Ciroc on the seventh uh, okay. rule. And, and Ira's brought it up, but... This is the first time we're saying that we're actually moving for we've actually made progress and okay. editing has been done and it, it's moving forward. OK, yeah. so just a, but well, right that, now, that awesome. the focus is Voyager. So speak, oh, yeah. speaking yeah. of um, <laughs> just as a practicality, um, do you all know what the link is for the Indiegogo? Um, what what should people look up to to find it on on Monday? Uh, well, Void Doc, a Void, Void documentary will get you to uh, all the social media. Excuse me. Um, if you go to Indiegogo.com and search uh, Voyager, Voyager Doc or uh, Voyager documentary, uh, you'll find it. Once the page is live, we will be sh uh, sharing it on all social media that, that we do, which is Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, as well as our YouTube channel and four or five five films. Uh, social media will be also uh, sharing that. Uh, we'll be sending out uh, newsletters to previous backers. We already have uh, many of you may have already seen announcements. Um, so we yeah, we're we're trying to uh, use the the. The, the, the series of tubes that make up the internet <laughs> as efficiently as possible. Right. Well, Ryan's on the job. He's got the link in the chat here, yep. guys. I so. knew he would. Yeah. Yep. No, there you go. Yeah. There you yeah go. Ryan and Ryan's been great. Ryan's been. Uh, we've had him chained to his computer. <laughs> uh, he doesn't get to to leave. Uh, we we've sent him plenty of 
empty water bottles for the next uh, 36 hours. <laughs> and yeah. Ryan's another fortuitous uh, outgrowth of what we left behind. We met Ryan through Deep Space Nine. I mean, that's through his Seventh Rule podcast. That's how we. That's how we met. There you go. Well, I I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but we're we're so much full of love for the writers' room recreation, and then the the graphic you know depiction of that all. Is there anything? Are you looking at any set pieces special like that for the Voyager doc or? Or yeah, something. Absolutely. We can't even talk about it. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't want to. We don't want to uh, tip mm -hmm. our hand, but we we have one specific thing that we're very excited to do. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go farther than that. Well, uh, Larry, I'll, I will say when we talked to Brandon, the first words out of his mouth, I think, were, "How are you guys going to top the writers' room?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh no, Brandon feeling a little competitive there. Oh no, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a healthy competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't want to put you at the spot either, but I'm also going to. We've had a will. number of questions in the comments section about the inevitable other flagship UPN show, um, Star Trek Enterprise. Any idea down the road if you all would like to explore that? I will say a resounding yes. Oh, and I, yeah. I, um, I love the guys in Enterprise, especially Connor and Dominic, who I've gotten to know very well over mm -hmm. the years. And uh, we explored Enterprise and the captains, certainly, mm -hmm. uh, to a certain extent. But I think that's a fascinating story as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll get a good quote or two out of John Billingsley. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And Scott Bakula well, is terrific. I mean, all of them. Well, yeah. I, I will say I'm. I'm. Uh, we have a to go with our Indiegogo campaign. We'll have a pitch video that will be part of that, and there will be something in there that speaks directly to what you just asked. Yeah. Oh, you're making you're making our dreams come true here today. Um, <laughs> the, you know, the thing about Enterprise, I think all the series have this, um, and definitely with Voyager. Um, some of the stories about Kate and Jerry and uh, Seven and Janeway and, and all of those have, have really come to light. And it's been um, really helpful to, to hear the, the actors involved kind of talking about that experience. But with Enterprise, so much has come to light about the studio's pressure and how the studio Absolutely. was seeing Enterprise versus the cast versus the crew versus the writers. And I, I would love to see that story told and come together because it's really in bits and pieces, DVD footage here, interview here. Um, it, it would be it, a documentary for Enterprise just would make so much sense. Yeah, I have a lot of love for that show, so mm -hmm. I would say it's very, very possible. So help us with Voyager. So we can <laughs> move, move on. To <laughs> well, if, as Voyager needs any more, you know, uh, talking points. But yes, yes, that's a, yeah. that's that's the icing on the cake. Get, yeah. Make it out of this and and move on down the road. But I don't see how I I couldn't do it. I mean, I've done the original series with Bill. I mean, certainly mm -hmm. done a lot there. We did Chaos in the Bridge. What we left behind, Voyager. How do we not continue with Enterprise? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and speaking of, um, you sold me. Yeah, I'm I'm right here. I'm green lighting it right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Anytime. How um how can people help? What would be the best way? I know signing up for the Indiegogo. What can people do to really help the Voyager documentary? That's really it. And then retweet that link and spread the word. Yeah. Right, Joe. That's what we need. Definitely. You know, we'll be. Yes, share the share the the pitch video when it comes out with people, because that will that's messaging from basically from us and the and the cast of Voyager, um, to sh just share and comment and keep the conversation alive. We're, we'll be throughout the campaign. You'll be seeing messages from various people uh, affiliated with the show, and and. And from Star Trek, uh, the broader Star Trek family as well. Um, so we're going to try and keep everybody entertained and keep the word up. And we hope that you will help support us in any way that you can. Whether I don't remember any restrictions this way on DS9, but this is you're global, right? Everybody around because we've got a lot of yeah. folks across the pond both ways right with us right now. But it's Absolutely. global. Everybody around the world can jump in and 
and get perks and and donate. You know, and, and, yeah. and we understand that you know this is a tough time for a lot of people. So you know, if you can't uh, support us through a donation, we we totally understand. But you can support us by spreading the yeah. word and letting as many people know as possible. Yeah. You know, one one thing that you know we've done two previous crowdfunding campaigns: one for for the love of Spock, and one for for what we left behind, and. Both times we waited until the day that we launched it to, to get the word out. And it was great, but we kept hearing from people. I still read comments. I wish I had known this was happening. I would have contributed. Um, and so we, we you know, hooked up with Ryan and Ryan said, no, you got to start getting the word out. Mm-hmm. Ideally, we would have been getting the word out in December, but we, we started on January 1st. It takes time to get all your ducks in a row. And, uh, you know, he's he's really done a great job of letting people know this is happening. So now that it's going to happen, hopefully a lot more people are going to know than the previous campaigns and a lot more people are going to be able to be a part of it. And that's always a rewarding thing for us as filmmakers to to have that involvement and passion from the fan base, from the people that want to see this project. Well, Larry and I are going to do everything we can in the whole community here right. about getting the word out. And um, Joe I'm just and going to thank you guys. Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. thank you yeah, for. Thank you, yeah. No, we. Yeah, um, thank you too. The Star Trek family. I, I'll just do a picture real quick. I've had Lolita on the Trek Files a couple of times, and some more to come. And I want to get. I want to sit down with you guys on the Trek Files too, my podcast. Sure. So. Uh, yeah, right. So anything we can all do on all our, and you know everybody out there listening and, and, and watching. And, and we have to give Lolita a great shout out because. Oh yeah, you know, this wouldn't be happening. We couldn't be. We couldn't do this without Lolita's involvement, and she's helped us yeah. with so many of our projects. Uh, and you know, and it's just been great to work with her as a, a producer on this uh, and interact because she's yeah. just, one. She's in my mind, she's Star Trek royalty. She's been there from you know from from the next generation, working directly with uh, mm-hmm. Gene Roddenberry, and it doesn't get closer to the source than that. So, yeah. Joe, Dave, yeah. thank yeah. you for being here and being so generous yeah. with, with your time and, and being part of our community. We can't wait to see this. Um, just a couple of days. Just yeah, yeah so soon. Yes. Yeah. March first. Um, yeah, we're not going to be getting any sleep this weekend, I don't think, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I gotta, I gotta go work on a video. <laughs> yeah. Next. And Joe, everyone's, everyone's sharing so much love for your shirt. We got a lot of love, especially oh, for you. NASA uh, right now. So people are loving your Absolutely. shirt. <laughs> um, any? Yeah, I, lo- I love NASA. <laughs> any, um, any, any last, uh, l- last things you all would like to say before we wrap up? Just. Well, uh, I- I'd like to thank the continued support of the fans. I mean, I couldn't have created this kind of career without the support of Star Trek fans. And I really found, I mean, we had met so many people on the cruise that were so passionate about it. And then I found, you know, with the cancellation, I really missed that interaction. I mean, Larry, you know, we've become Mm -hmm. friends with all of these people and, um, yeah, I mean, we, we couldn't do it without the fans. That's it. And, and you know, in the last year, Definitely. thank God for what we're doing right now. Uh, yeah. You know, there's YouTubing, but there's just the whole Zoom ability here or whatever the channel is just for people, for all of us to stay in touch this way. Yeah, it's helped. Uh, has been amazing to keep civilization mm-hmm. moving along, much less fandom. But uh, yeah, but here you are that you didn't have to put everything on ice for a year, that you've actually been able to make some progress. And We have. Yeah, and, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. It's, it's, that's made, uh, that made 2020 memorable for me personally, being able yeah. to be busy, uh, with something that I enjoy doing. <laughs> and it gave us time to work on the captain's collection, Joe. We had a lot of fun yeah. doing all yeah. the special features. Yeah. For that. Why don't you take a minute, just attack it. You've mentioned that twice. What you're, is it a recut? Uh, you're doing some new footage? Well, we, we, uh, so we remastered that's all the films you. and, and there we is. got all the, oh, wow. uh, all the, the special features that were done at the time, and, and those were all put on Blu-ray, which uh, none Shout of those films have Shout seen. Factory. Oh, uh, Shout yeah. Factory. Mm, yeah. And we put so, together uh, additional over two and a half hours of bonus content, which is really extended interviews with Grace Lee Whitney, Walter Koenig, Patrick Kellerman, uh, Patrick Stewart, Maury Hurley, 
uh, uh, Gary Ira. Lockwood, um, uh, Ira, actually, yeah. uh, Melinda, Melinda Snodgrass. Who am I missing, Dave? I mean, that's a pretty good list. So essentially, <laughs> it's, yeah. the, it's the five episodes of The Captain's Close-Up and one of the probably one of the mo most poignant moments on the documentary, on the uh, Blu-ray, is still kicking. We have the extended version of the conversation between William Shatner and Pat uh, Christopher Plummer. Yeah, uh, you know, who just recently passed mm -hmm. away, and that's never been seen. So wow. there's a lot, and that of, was the, that was the first thing I ever I, I ever yeah. edited uh, for Dave. Mm -hmm. And even so the first documentary that I did with Bill Gonzo Ballet is on there. So it's the entire Shatner documentary collection all on one Blu-ray. Scott wow. Scott in our comments is saying uh, the Captain's collection is tons of fun, and and he really loved the extended Shatner Plumber time. So that yeah. I haven't seen I haven't seen that. I'm gonna have to pick that up. Um, yeah. Shout Factory well, I, has been so wonderful in distributing this. Shout is awesome. Yeah, yeah. They were they were they, they distributed uh, what what we left behind, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, they've yep, been wonderful. They did. Yeah. 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 And I mean, they're distributing the new Nichelle Nichols. Uh, uh, woman, woman, oh, woman in motion. In motion, yeah, about Nichelle Which Nichols' wonderful influence on NASA. Oh, wow. Which yeah. has yeah. been really under under uh, promoted. I we were just talking with some people recently about how no one knows. A lot of people don't have no idea about that. So well, wait, yeah. you see this I, film. I, it's a wonderful I, I did, documentary. I just saw it what we uh, like in the last month. I, I was yeah. I thought it was fabulous. Yeah, and I see Ryan's got a Captain's Collection link in the chat here too. So <laughs> oh, awesome. thank you, Ryan. Good on you, Ryan. <laughs> Well, yeah. we're going to return the thanks. Anyway, um, yeah. It's uh, from the Star Trek fan side of things. Thank you for preserving. Um, for, thank you for being the living witnesses and, and bringing that mm -hmm. these stories um, together in a way that we can all have and hold on to and cherish and share. So thank you for everything you've done on all the past work and the work to come. Thank you, guys. Thank Absolutely, you. guys. Thank thanks you. a lot. Yeah, all right. It's been a we'll lot of fun soon. too. Yes, yeah. so, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Saturday. Well, Glad we got it all wrangled. Yeah, um, guys, make it so and uh, yep. live long and prosper. You too. Bye, everyone, bye, and bye, everyone bye. in our in our community. We'll see and you next week. I hope week. you enjoyed that. Ali, are we gone? Have you been playing uh, music? We can, we can do a wrap up. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Joe and Dave, if you want to take, there we go, and we are back to uh, to Larry and I. Um, Larry, that was a ton of fun. And Larry, how did I just lose your, how did I lose your audio? <laughs> what just, oh. there you go. There you go. You're back. You're back. Okay. Okay. No, I said, <laughs> say, I, we had this huge argument, guys, and Ollie's a guests, Voyager, watch along. What are you talking about? And I said, no, it'll work. Trust me. Trust me. Oh, that was so much fun. That was awesome. Yeah. No, I, we wanted to help support the doc. And I said, well, let's try to find a way that fits, if not our normal routine, why don't we do a, a watch along? And it was just amazing that Living Witness is, A, a wonderful story about getting history wrong. Yeah. You know, documenting gone wrong and b it's a voyager so it was like perfect it was yeah glinda says live long and party on um i love that i have how have i not <laughs> heard that before that's awesome um yeah larry that was um dave and, and joe were so so lovely and so grateful to have them on um i know lolita was going to join but skype was not Skype was, Skype was giving her problems. Here, it was a twofold thing. On one hand, I was bringing her along on Skype. It was, this ancient technology is not for everyone. But on the other hand, of all, you know, they've been doing a lot of, they've been, as they said, they've been trying to promote the, the Indiegogo ahead of time, more so than they've done ever so far. And they've got Ryan on board to help with that. <clears throat> and it's like, yes, let's help, let's do what we can to help. Um, but of all the promo, it's mainly been Dave and Lolita doing them. Uh, not that Joe can't, and he's been part of the team for 10 years and he's a big part of that. Um, but he really, really wanted to be part of our watch along and see it and, and be in the chat and talk about the show and all that. So it was kind of a two thing, like Lolita was having tech issues with Skype and 
Joe was like, I really want to you know, talk about this and jump on this one. So it was it was great. And it was great to see him and talk again. Well, and, and this uh, is um, I think Joe mentioned this, how um, working on this project has been uh, so it has helped him to get through 2020. And this is the thing about Star Trek. It's it's been something that's helped so many of us. It's helped you and me and our community here <laughs> to have life support live, have this as a part of our our life uh, in 2020. And um Knowing that the Voyager documentary is on the other side of this is also something to really look forward to. And I feel like saying right here, we we famously now talk about how this whole thing began as a a panel pitch for WonderCon, which is like the junior edition of San Diego. Yeah. Um, And, you know, we went to virtual. We did it virtually, but we thought, what do we keep this going? Well, it's we've come full circle Guys, uh, the word is getting out about the virtual WonderCon panels this year. We've put in for another one, and yes. we're going to do we're going to do a, an, a one hour short special the way we did for Virtual TrekCon or for some, virtual somebody Trek else. Con, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. TrekCon. So we're going to pick another topic and do a, a one hour version of the show for everybody. So hopefully you all enjoy that. On t- you know, not replacing a weekly show, but hopefully you all enjoy that and uh, can help us promote that yeah. and. And everything too. So anyway, it's just funny how it's. it's, it's we're coming on that. Though. We're coming we're on that coming. one year anniversary, yeah. Larry. The, this show started in April. Um, we're coming. We're coming back to it uh, very soon. So, yeah, it's. Uh, it's I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Jared's got a retreat planned for the one year anniversary <laughs> of the show. Or. Right. Right. Um, well, uh, we're going to be back to our regularly, regularly scheduled program (laughs) next week, folks. Um, until then, um, please support the Voyager documentary on Monday. Um, and we'll be sharing that information as well. Uh, and I, and I should say, I saw a few new names in the chat today, especially on the YouTube side. If you're new to us, thank you. We didn't really say this up front. I'm glad to see you, but we are here every week at this time. We have a completely different normal structure. This is our alternate <laughs> one when we do this a watch This is our along. alternate history this structure. This is our alternate universe. <laughs> I forgot to wear all my gold and black today. But I um, didn't wear my gloves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, join us. We're here every week. And you can go to the the uh, Facebook page as a group page. And we talk about people post fun things. We decide themes for the week. We have a lot of fun there. But uh, like and subscribe where you're watching right now, especially on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see you again. I just put on, Larry, I just put on the sad music, as, as Libby oh, okay. would say. Um, and yes, Libby, I've been seeing you all through the chat today. So I think we got that licked for good. So, <laughs> Libby says, what will we do on Saturdays when uh, things are more normal? I think we'll uh, we'll go see people, Libby. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I kind of think about that. What would be, um, how Define normal Libby, right? <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll have some, at some point in the future, we'll have a live in-person version of this one day. Um, I, uh, I look forward to that. Um, Larry, where can people find more of your work this week? Oh, but now this week only I have a trek <laughs> where you're watching right now. Uh, Twitter at Larry Nimichek, uh, LarryNimichek.com. Uh, there's going to be some. Yeah, we've got. I've got two panels coming up for WonderCon, and I'm going to. Oh, I didn't even mention this. The Voyager documentary gang have a, a virtual panel for oh, WonderCon, cool. and I'm going to moderate their panel for that. Oh, cool. So yeah, wonderful. So that's coming down the pike. Watch, be watching for that. Otherwise, uh, Tuesday's live at 1 p.m. Pacific, and uh, the Trek Files every week on Runberry podcast. Wonderful. Um, well, Larry, I am. Um, I'm on YouTube. I'm always there. I'm there right now. I'm playing multiple videos there right now on um, the Psych You're Show on, on <laughs> right um, the Psych Show on YouTube. I did cross the streams a little bit, Larry, this week, and um, I joined my friends over at the uh, Full of Sith podcast. Um, they asked me for a deep dive into any Star Trek or Star Wars topic, and I said. Can I just spend an hour gushing about Luke Skywalker's psychology? So if you go to uh, Full of Sith, uh, their yeah. podcast, you'll find that episode. And um, does, does Dr. Drea know your 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 We talked about her. her we talked about her in the episode. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll do a, another follow-up. Um, so folks, 
uh, that's what's going on here. And then next week, we're going to be back uh, with another episode of Life Support Live. Let us know what topic you'd like us to cover over in our Facebook group. Life Support uh, Live um, is uh, the group to go to. And until then, Larry, I hope everyone continues to live long and prosper or live long and party. Absolutely. (laughs) Trek well, everybody.